Good morning, afternoon, evening, night, whenever you're watching this, welcome to Economics with Mr. Sin. Today's an exciting day, econ students. We're going to be going into your first charts, the PPF charts. It is going to be a lot of fun. Now, don't panic if you're worried about charts and some math. It'll be okay. We will go through this step by step. This video will actually be broken up into a couple parts. This one's just going to explain what PPF charts are. There'll be another video going into practice problems. So that way, if you're struggling with applying the concepts, you'll have resources to help you. Now, let's figure out what a PPF chart is and why it is important. Now, while watching this video, make sure you use the guided notes. I've created guided notes for all of the different videos on my channel. The guided notes can be found in the description below. They go along with the video and will help you remember all the important concepts. Now, I know it's not cool or fun to take notes, but I assure you it will help. And when you need to take your quiz or test, you can reference back to your notes instead of having to look at the video. So take out your notes and let's figure out what a PPF chart is. Now, a PPF chart stands for the Production Possibilities Frontier. And what it shows us is combinations, combinations of output between two different goods that we as a society or even an individual could do if all of our resources are being maximized and fully utilized. So this is going to be really important. This actually will get us into why we trade as a country and why at the same time too it's so important to understand what we're doing with our resources and how we can maximize our production. Now before we get carried away, let's go into what a PPF chart looks like and break down exactly how to interpret it and understand it so you know what's going on. So you can see that the PPF chart right now is on the screen. And you can see there's two different things that we can produce. For this PPF chart, I'm looking at what I can produce. I can either produce ducks or YouTube videos. I have to make a choice. I don't have enough time because we have scarcity or resources to do both. So I'll have to make choices. Now, one of the things you can see is this line. This PPF chart is bowed outwards. Now, the PPF chart is showing anything on this line are different combinations that I could produce. So for example, I could produce five ducks, but then I would only be able to make two YouTube videos. I would have to take time to make those ducks and it would cost resources. But anything that is on the PPF line, on this chart line that you can see, is when we are maximizing our resources. And that's an important thing to understand. Any point on that line, again, is a maximized resource. We've used all of our resources that we have available to us. Anything inside of the PPF chart then is an inefficient use of resources. We didn't use them all. Now, sometimes in life we can't avoid inefficiencies and we will have to be operating within our own PPF chart or society will have to operate there as well. On the other hand, anything outside the PPF chart is impossible for us to obtain. Now, eventually maybe something comes along and I'll be able to produce more ducks and more YouTube videos and my PPF chart will shift to the right which would be increasing. By shifting to the right then, what was once impossible is now possible. But currently, anything that would go outside of the PPF chart, I just can't do. I don't have enough resources to be able to produce out there. And so that's gonna be really important for you to understand. Anything inside the PPF chart is an inefficient use of resources. Anything on the line is an efficient and it's also the maximum amount we can do. It's an efficient use of resources. And anything outside that line is impossible. We cannot do it. We just don't have the resources to be able to produce it. So now I have to figure out, should I do ducks or YouTube videos? It's a very hard question. Now, one of the things I talked about with the PPF chart is inefficient use of resources. Remember, anything inside the PPF chart is an inefficient use. And I want to give you a couple examples of why that would happen. Let's say that as a country, we have to figure out if we want to produce butter or guns. And we decide to produce at point C. So this is where we're currently producing. So you can see in our PPF chart where we're at right now. Well, let's say all of a sudden that our butter workers go on strike. All of a sudden now we can't produce butter. Well, this is one of the things that would happen. We would shift downwards in our production because the butter workers are no longer working. 
And at the same time though, we can't be maximizing all our resources. We can't just shift everything over and start immediately producing guns. No, those factories have been designed for the production of butter. We've already sent resources there. It takes time and money to convert things and to ship things over to the gun factory. And so we wouldn't be able to just shift it immediately. So we'd be operating at least for a portion of time with an inefficient use. We would have idle resources just sitting there not being used. The same is true if all of a sudden, let's say, a hurricane hit and our population had to temporarily leave for their own safety. Well, we have an inefficient use of resources there that we just can't control. So there's a bunch of different reasons why we would see inefficiencies in a PPF chart and for society or as an individual. Hopefully that makes sense of why that would shift over and why we can't just immediately move to a different point on the PPF chart. Another thing we can see with PPF charts is opportunity costs. Now we've talked about opportunity costs already in this class. Now on the chart that you can see here, we have guns and butter again. If we wanted to move from A, point A, to point B, what would the opportunity cost be? Take a second and think about it. Pause this video and try to figure out exactly what the opportunity cost is of moving from point A to point B. Remember, opportunity cost is what we give up, what we are not deciding to do because of a different choice that we've picked. Think you got it? If you need more time, pause the video. But our opportunity cost we could see here would be 30. For us to move up 100 additional units of butter, we give up the production of 30 guns. That's our opportunity cost. So we can see our trade-offs that are occurring here. As we make decisions, for at least in this example, our opportunity cost here was the 30 guns that we could have made if we would have stayed at point A. PPF charts only show us a specific point in time, and they can change over time. If we see that our production capabilities increase through technological advancements, trade deals, population increases, an accumulation of capital and wealth, well, it will go to the right. And if the opposite happens for all those things, it would go to the left and decrease. So it's important to note that when we're looking at a PPF chart, it's just one snapshot in time and it can change. Another thing that's really important to understand is what's happening with opportunity costs. And an easy way to tell is looking at it graphically. If we see that it is a linear PPF chart, well then we have a constant opportunity cost. Meaning as we decide to do our trade off and if we decide to go from like that one example we had from point A to point B or we decide to produce more of one of our options over the other, we don't give up more. The opportunity cost continues to stay the same. However, if we see a bowed out graph, the law of increasing opportunity cost is in effect. And what that means is as we continue to produce more of one resource over another, we will continue to give up more and more. Our opportunity cost will continue to increase and go up. So while a linear one will have a constant opportunity cost and it won't matter where we produce on there because we'll give up the exact same amount, a bowed out one, we will have the increasing opportunity cost and it will continue to become essentially more expensive for us to give up because our opportunity cost is higher. Hopefully you're having a pretty good understanding of what a PPF chart is, how to interpret it and understand it, what are some things that could change it, and even just how to read them graphically. Make sure to check out my next video which will get into all practice problems and it's also going to get into trade as well. So make sure to check that out. Until next time, I'm Mr. Sin. Thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to subscribe and support the channel. And until next time, I will talk to you later.